ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed to create human being. As we all know in the aqidah, Allah doesn't have to do anything. He just wills to do it. And then He told the angels to mold this human being from water and earth, from this clay. And then all of the angels who were there, Allah commanded them. And then amongst the angels there was another creature from amongst the jinn the angels are made from light from nur the jinns are made from fire but this jinn iblis was such a pious jinn because the jinns are like the human being they have the ability to sin or to obey they have the free will the angels don't have it they are they're like robots that are pre program by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are, there, are, there are angels who would say subhanallah from the time they're created till the end of time. That's all they do. They just keep saying subhanallah. Their angels say alhamdulillah. So they don't have a choice. They do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them to do. But the jinns and the human being are the creatures that do have a choice. And this jinn was amongst the angels because he was such a pious jinn that worshipped Allah for the time that we don't know how long. Then the Quran says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ يُسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجِدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ That Allah commanded the angels that all of you in this circle prostrate because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, human being, this bashar, this new creation. They all did except Iblis. This one creature refused to bow down. And this according to our ulama is the first wrong action in the history of creation. This is the first time somebody just said, no, I'm not going to do that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah drove him out of the kingdom and he became amongst those who were rejected. He said to Allah that this creature that you're creating there, if you give me time, I'll prove to you that this is, they're, they're not going to follow you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him respite, give him time. He said, you have time, go ahead. You can whisper all you want. So the battle of the shaitan and human being began on that day. Satan versus Adam and the progeny of Adam and the descendant of Adam alayhi salam. All of us human beings, he is our enemy. This is why, inna shaitan lakum aduwu fattakhiduhu aduwa. The Quran reminds us, indeed shaitan is your enemy. So take him as an enemy. He was the enemy of your father, he is the enemy of you, and he will be the enemy of your children until the end of time. So what he does, he's trying to make people, the human race, go away from God. And he has certain tricks. Now, when Sulaiman salam, the Prophet Solomon, he saw Satan and he had wristbands in his hand, in different colors array of wristbands. And he asked him, what are those? He said, these are my tricks. These are my categorical tricks. Each one has many tricks inside of them. So I have one for, for uh, intoxicant. But within intoxicant, I have so many things. I can give them alcohol, I can give them beer, I can give them wine cooler, I can give them drugs, I can give them heroin. I have so many, but the categorical is only a few. Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi said something really beautiful. He said, all of, sin, all of ma'asiyah, all acts of disobedience come from three sources. There are three things. And if you get these things, you're good. He said, number one, it's kibber. The first thing is kibber, arrogance. Arrogance was what drove Satan from the dominion of God because he refused to bow down to Adam. Adam what did he say? Abba was stuck about our kanim in al-kafirin. He became arrogant. 
And then he becomes amongst those who were rejected. Allah drove him out of the kingdom because of his arrogance. It's one of the sickest disease in the, in the science of spiritual, spirituality, in the sciences of the diseases of the heart. Arrogance is one of the worst diseases because arrogance is to see other people lower than yourself, to deem yourself big, to think you're better than anybody else because this is the disease of shaitan. Shaitan said, why didn't shaitan bow down to Adam? He said, this man is made out of dirt and water, two qualities that go down. I'm made out of fire and air, two qualities that rises. So in reality, the first materialist is shaitan. He thought he was better material. Why should I bow down to, to Adam? In his kibber, all of those millennia of worship was destroyed by his arrogance that he didn't bow down and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the sickest diseases. In human beings become arrogant. We become arrogant because of our power, because of our colors, because of our wealth, because of whatever Allah, the blessing that He gave us, we become arrogant with it. And what, what, how, how? People don't even think. Look at the entire world right now. In this moment, everyone is shivering from a corona disease. Where are all these arrogant people? Where are they at? They're all shivering. Everybody's becoming humble with a disease. You can't even see a virus. Well, why are we becoming arrogant? And arrogant people, Allah turns them into ants on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. They be like little ants and everybody walks over them because they see people like ants. This is their sickness. They, they see that they're better than them. And this is what Abdullah Ansari, the great sage of the 5th century said, a beautiful uh, scholar and, 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 uh, and a poet of Persian literature, he said, Aibas buzur bar guzidan khudra, was jumblay khalq bar guzidan khudra. Az marduma ki jide ba bayad amukht, didan hama kaswali na jidan khudra. He said, the biggest aib, the biggest deficiency in the human being, is to see yourself bigger than other people, to see yourself better than other people. That's the biggest deficiency in you. And he said, I will give you one advice. Allah has given you eyes. And within your eyes is the people of the eye. He said, learn from the people of the eye that it sees everything, yet it doesn't see itself. It sees everything, but it doesn't see itself. That's humility. You see the good and beauty in everybody, but not in yourself. That is real humility. That is humility. The second thing that he said, he said the second thing that all of Ma'asiyah comes from is hers, is greed. Greed is one of the mother diseases of the heart. It's to want more. The Prophet ﷺ said, the son of Adam, his mouth will not be full. If you give him a mountain of gold, he wants another mountain. If you give him the second mountain, he wants another mountain of gold. He said, what fills the mouth of the son of Adam is the dirt of the grave. That's what's going to fill it up. This is the nature of greedy people. They want more and more and more. And there's no end to it. And there's no end to it until the, the greedy person is the similitude of it is like a person who is thirsty who is thirsty and dying of thirst. And they get to this ocean, an ocean, but a salt water. And they keep drinking. And the more they drink, the thirstier they get. The more they drink, the thirstier they get. Until that water that they are drinking to satiate themselves, it kills them. This is the nature of greedy people. And they would never, never be filled. It's never enough. It's never enough. Shaykh al-Kharaqani, one of the great masters, he was a sadiq, he didn't have anything. He was uh, living in a hut. At the same time, there was a sultan, one of the great sultan of our history, sultan, he was the Ghaznavi empire, Sultan Mahmoud al-Ghaznavi. He conquered all of Persia, India, amazing dominion he had. And then he, he wanted to meet Shaykh al-Kharaqani, he went to visit him. And at the end of his visit, he went to his little hut, he had nothing. He had a kettle in, in, in a pot, that's it, in his, in his place. And he gave him a sack of gold. The Sultan gave Shaykh al Kharaqani a sack of gold. And the Shaykh gave it back to him. He said, You're in more in need of this than I am. And the Sultan smiled. He said, Ya Shaykh, you know about my dominion? 
I have the Persia, I have India, I have all these dominions. And the Sheikh asked him a question. He said, do you want to conquer more land and have more? He said, of course. He said, then you're in more need of this than I am because I am free from want. I am free from want. And this is why when you arrive at the valley of contentment, this is when you are rich. Abdul Qadir Bidil, the great Persian poet of India, the Dehli, he said, he said, Iz basad iz zujo, hirs basad iz zujo, dar hama surat gadost. Gar ba qino adrasi, faqr qino mi shawad. He said, the problem of hirs, of greed, is that no matter how much you have, you're still a beggar. You're still poor. He said, when you arrive to the valley of contentment, your poverty, your poverty will become your riches. You'll be the richest man on the planet, according to Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu wajhu, if you're content. Because you have everything, you don't want anything. Once you're free from want, you're the rich person. The poor people are those who have billions of dollars, but yet they want more, and they want more. And that is not going to be satiated except the dirt of the grave. The next one he said is envy, hasad. He said hasad is one of the diseases of the heart that destroys you. Most people are envious from the blessing that Allah has given to somebody else. And they say, why, why he has it, I don't have it. Why she has it, I don't have it. That means that you are not content with the decree of God. We have to be pleased with what Allah has given anybody. Allah, he can do whatever he wants. Allah says, I can do whatever I want. I can give the dunya to whoever I want. I can give poverty. I can give beauty. I can give power to whomsoever I want. And whatever it is, is none of your business. But envy, the Prophet ﷺ said, envy eats your good action like fire devours dry wood. You lose your and envious people. Look at look at what happened with the envy of Qabil. He was envious of his brother. He killed his own brother because of envy. The first murder in the history of humanity happened because of envy. Qabil killed his own brother. He was envious of his brother's wife. These are the sicknesses, these are the three sicknesses that Ibn Juzayl, Ibn uh, Ayyum al Jawzi says that all of ma'asiyah, all of disobedience come from the, these three sources. So we have to protect ourselves. But here's the beauty of this deen. With all of that, we have a Lord that is so generous. We have a God that is so merciful that regardless of what you have done, regardless of how much sin you have done, regardless of how, how many years of your life you spend in ghifla, in heedlessness, Allah says, turn to me and I'll wipe everything out for you. Because my mercy encompasses everything. The Hadith Qudsi said, my mercy is over my wrath. It's over my anger. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond our comprehension. And Allah loves every one of us. Allah loves every single one of His creatures. The Muslims, the kuffar, the atheists, the believers, the disbelievers. Allah loves everyone because He created everybody out of love. And it's the end of the affairs that Allah is looking for. Sayyidina Umar was beloved to God when he was worshipping idols in Mecca. Because the end, he would become Umar ibn al-Khattab, the one who gave Isa dignity to the religion of Islam. And this is why you have to be careful. We have to make dua for those people who are in state of ghifla. But look at the history of this religion. And I'll give you an example from one of the people from the time of the Sahaba. During the battle of Badr, a few people were killed from the Kuffar. The Muslims were victorious. One of the people was the father of him, Utba. He was killed. Another person was Mut'im uh, ibn Adi, the father of Jubayr ibn Mut'im. Mut'im ibn Adi, he had a, Jubayr had a servant, a slave, very strong, Abyssinian slave by the name of Wahshi ibn Harb. Wahshi means savage. Harb means war. The savage, the son of war. 
This is what the, the type of name the Arabs used to give to their servants because they wanted them to fight, to be warriors. And after the battle, they said to him that if you kill Sayyidina Hamza, because he was involved in that battle and killing them, he said, if you kill him, we'll set you free. This man had one mission, to be free and kill Sayyidina Hamza. During the battle of Uhud, all he was doing was looking for Sayyidina Hamza and he became successful and martyred Sayyidina Hamza, who was the cousin of, who was the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, who was his confidant, his best friend from childhood, who was also his milk brother. They were milked together by Suwaiba. So very close relationship. The Prophet ﷺ was devastated seeing that. And then not only he killed him, he opened his chest because him wanted to eat the liver of Sayyidina Hamza. That's how angry she was. These are the type of people that the Prophet ﷺ dealt with. You think times are tough now? You think they're tough? Look how he dealt with these people. But she opened the chest and he told the story to the Prophet ﷺ. He opened the chest of Sayyidina Hamza and then he bit into that liver and then she vomited it. She couldn't swallow it. And this is what Qad Iyad said in Ashifa that she vomited that because Allah made her vomit. Because of the power of the blood of the martyrs of Sayyidina Hamza. Ha Hamza, if it was gone that inside of her body, if that blood would have gone inside the body of him, it would purify her from every sin that she has ever done. That's how powerful that is. That's how powerful the blood of Sayyidina Hamza was. But then again, conquest of Mecca. They come, they conquer Mecca, everybody, all these guys flee. And he goes. Wahshi leaves and he goes to uh, Taif. When he goes to Taif, and then people start becoming Muslim and coming from Taif. And then they say, why don't you become Muslim? They said, I? Me? I'm a murderer. My name is on the list. The Prophet gave a list of the war criminals when he entered Mecca. He said, these are war criminals. And Wahshi said, I'm, I'm one of those war criminals. There's no way I'll be forgiven. I write a letter to him. Can somebody deliver? So send the letter to the Prophet Would I be forgiven? Would I be forgiven? I've done all these wrong. I killed Sayyidina Hamza. I've done all these wrong in my life. And the Prophet could not even answer. Then God sends revelation. For who? For Wahshi. The biggest enemy of Islam. The murderer of Sayyidina Hamza. Allah's concern with Bahshi. And he said, Illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan salih fa ulaika yubadilu Allah sayyatihim hasanat. Wa kaan Allahu ghafoor al rahim. Except for those who make tawbah, who believe in Allah and they do righteous action. Allah will turn their wrong action, their evil action into good action. And indeed, he's forgiving and he's full of mercy. Revelation comes because of Wahshi. And then the message is sent to him. And then he says another letter. He said, those are lofty things. I don't even know how strong my Iman is going to be. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do these great actions, Amal and Salihan. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all of that stuff. Then the Prophet wants to say something, but Allah doesn't allow him to say anything. Allah wants to respond to Wahshi's letter. To Wahshi's letter. And he says, In Allah la yaghfiru. Allah does not forgive. And yushraka bihi. If you associate partner with him. Wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. But he forgives anything else. Allah will forgive anything else. As long as you don't associate partner with him, he forgive anything else. وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ دَلَالًا بَعِيدًا And those who associate partner with Allah, indeed they have gone astray. And then he sends a letter back and he says, But I'm a mushrik. I live all my life with shirk. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the patience of God. Look at the patience of God. Right? One of the Urdu poets said, He said, Ruz guna karta ho, wo chupata hai apne rahmat se. Me majboor apne adat se, wo mashhoor apne rahmat se. By day I sin, 
but he veils my sin out of his mercy. Because I'm bounded by a state of disobedience, but he's bounded by his mercy. And then he says, but I was a mushrik. Is, is there hope for me? I want to know if there's hope for me that I'll be forgiven. And then Allah sends down another revelation. In this, for us, we have to really reflect. This is how Allah is dealing with one of the worst human beings on this planet. And it says, يَعْبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Oh, servants of God, who have wronged yourself. In other words, you can't wrong me. You can't wrong God. You have wronged yourself. Do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Don't cut yourself from the mercy of Allah. Don't cut yourself from the mercy of Allah. In Allah, يَغْفِرُ الظُّرُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Because Allah forgives all sins. He forgives everyone. Everything that you have done, Allah can forgive. Because He is غفور. He is forgiven. That's, that's one of the names of Allah. Then, Wahshi came and took Shahada. It was then that he came and he sat in front of the Prophet وسلم, and he became Muslim. And this is a man who was one of the greatest enemies of Islam. But look what he did. The story doesn't end there. The Prophet loved Wahshi. There's a hadith that people misunderstand. When he took the shahada, the Prophet's face was down, he looked up and he said, Is this Wahshi the Abyssinian slave? And he said, Naam, yes, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, how did you kill Sayyidina Hamza? And he told the story. And the Prophet cried and wept. But he gave him the shahada. And he said, tell Wahshi that try not to cross in front of me. And this is because he loved Wahshi so much. Because he said, every time if I see him, I would remember the murder of my uncle. And I don't want Allah to punish him for that. I don't want Allah to punish him for that feeling that I have in my heart. This is why he is وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That he was not sent but a mercy to all of creation. And Bahshi said, he set on this path. And what did he do? Musaylamatul Kazab. After the Prophet wasallam, all of these people rose up. They said, we are prophet, I'm a prophet. I'm. But the biggest one was Musaylama. He had an army, he had massive amount of people behind him. And he claimed that he's a prophet. One thing that about the prophets is miracles. They say the Prophet ﷺ, whoever head he touched over, it's in the hadith. All of the people he rubbed their head as a young children, until they died, they had a full set of hair. Musaylam al Kazab, whoever he rubbed over their head, in their youth, they lost their hair, they became bald. It's one of the miracles of the Prophet. ﷺ. But Wahshi killed Musaylam al Kazab. He is the one who destroyed one of the biggest enemies of Islam right after the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, in my jahiliyyah, I killed the best of the believers. In my Islam, I killed the worst enemy of this religion. And this is why we have to make dua for those people. We have to have mercy. This is why if, if you want this kind of akhlaq, this kind of character, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ Allah. Take on the characteristics of God. Look how Allah treated this man. Look how patient he was with him. Look how much sabr went into this. Revelation came. This is not, this, look at what he means. Look at the, the uh, Asbab al Nuzul. These are all because of this one man. His, his yearning. Because Allah wants to save that one person from the fire. And yet, nobody cares about people going there. People going in groups to the fire now. And nobody wants to stop them with mercy, with love, with gentleness. And may Allah make us from amongst those people that we take تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ الله. Amen. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمةك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين. The three things that 
Ibn Qayyim al-Jawzi talks about kibr, one of the great, the great sins of Islam, arrogance, it leads to kufr. And that's what took Iblis, shaitan, out of his deen into kufr. One of the thing about kibr is that when you have, when you're an arrogant person, you only see the outward form. You can't see the inward reality. Right? So when he looked at Adam alayhi salam room, he said, Di tini Adam nadi. He said he saw the clay of Adam, but he didn't see his reality. He didn't see his deen. He didn't see his heart. He didn't see his mind. He didn't see the power inside of him. He didn't see the universe inside of that clay. Right? And that's the problem of arrogant people. They can't see the meaning in people. This is why most of our the marriages fall apart because of these three diseases. All of the wars of the world is because of these three diseases. If you look at every war, is either kibber, hasad, or envy. One of those three. Or all three combined, or two of the three. And if you see everything that happens in our societies, from our household, to our schools, to our massages, all of them are those three. And then hasad, envy, is what happened to Qabil, killing Habil. Envy is what happened to Yusuf alayhi salam, his brother, threw him in the well. Right? And then greed, what happened to Adam alayhi salam and Eve. They were driven out of paradise. You can have everything in this here, except one tree. Right? You can have everything except this one tree. Let's go and get that from that tree. Right? And that's what leads to disobedience. It leads to disobedience. And may Allah make us amongst people that we protect our hearts, protect ourselves, and may Allah protect our children, and our community, and our offspring until the Yawm Al-Qiyamah from these diseases that leads to kufr, that leads to disobedience, that leads to uh, hasad and envy. May Allah protect all of us. May Allah protect this community. May Allah protect everyone from these diseases, airborne. This is a really good dua to do in this time against the coronavirus. That, you know, may Allah protect us from everything that comes, the airborne, heavenly, and from the earth. May Allah protect our community. May Allah protect every community. May Allah protect this country. May Allah protect the earth from these diseases, inshallah. May Allah make, make us be awakened and understand that these are all from what we have sowed in our hands. May Allah bring peace and security to India. May Allah bring peace and security to the, to the Muslims and all of the people of India. May Allah bring peace and tranquility to Syria, to Iraq, to, uh, to Afghanistan, and Pakistan, and, and all over the Muslim world, all over the world. May Allah bring peace. May, may all of the children in the world live in peace and happiness and joy. Ya Allah, Ya Arham ar Your name is peace. Ya Allah, bring peace to the earth. Ya Allah, Ya Arham ar Ya Allah. May Allah make us from amongst the people that He is pleased with on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Ya Allah, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is proud of, inshaAllah wa ta'ala. Inna alhamdulillahi na'hamadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'firu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusana. Wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdiya Allah fala mudilla la, man yudlil fala hadiya la. Wa ashadu an la ilahi illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu arsaluhu bil huda bashiran wa nadheeran. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi Qur'an al-Majeed. إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي نمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبي بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حيان وأثمان وأقدهم عليا وفاتم سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحمد وحمزة حص أصد الله واسد الرسول خير القرون يقارن ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبخي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا لي أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وذكر الله أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة